Hi friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting and today I am in a pixel forest. Pixels, pixels everywhere. Pixels, pixels in my hair because we're talking about types of pixels today. Now, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and grab my free guide over at LearnChristmasLighting.com. Three things you need to know before you begin with Christmas lighting. Now, pixel types. If you're first getting into this hobby, then what you're probably going to see is these really standard bullet node type pixels. You can see them here. Bullet nodes on a string approximately four inches apart, though that's in centimeters, so it's not exact. Um, that we stick into different props, we stick them in strips, um, we stick them all over our house, you know, our business, whatever. And we make light shows, right? And it's a lot of fun. But as your light show grows and, you know, as it gets larger, you might feel the need, like I do, to kind of diversify into some different shapes and types of pixels. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, this isn't a video about technology types and different microchips, though we'll talk a little teensy bit about that. Um, but more so, it's about the variety of different shapes and types of pixels we have available. And I want to talk about those today. Uh, because it used to be that this was all you saw out there, was these type of pixels. But I find you can make a really interesting pixel light show. Uh, and, and make things, you know, give it more texture and more interest and just more visual appeal by using some different types of pixels. Now there's pros and cons to every type, so let's talk about them. So the first type we have is we've got our standard bullet pixels, as we mentioned, fits into different props. We talk about this all the time here. And we have the square pixels. Now these are both kind of the same thing. In essence, they're the same LED, they're the same diffuser, they're just a slightly different form factor, right? They're generally the same wattage, um, same three-wire type pixels. They generally work the same, okay? Uh, the primary difference between them is, I find, as long as you're two or three inches of spread apart, you can get the bullet nodes closer to your house. If you hang them directly off of your siding, like I do a lot of times, um, there's less push-off from the wall than with a bullet node. The bullet nodes are by far the most popular, and as the theme of today's video will be, they are the cheapest, okay? Uh, but that doesn't mean they're for everybody. So let's look at a few other types, and actually a caveat to that rule. So when you think about pixels, okay, you're going to have a bullet node oftentimes at every uh, four inches, every three inches, every two inches, every inch. Some One of those spacings, right? Uh, depending on your props, depending on your setup, you know, you could have different amounts of spacing. My my setup is primarily 2 inch, um, some of my stuff is 3 inch, and if I had to do it all over again, I would do it all in 3 inch, except for the matrixes, okay? Uh, but that's neither here nor there, I have a video on that here, okay? But what's interesting is to make pixels look bigger or more dynamic per se, um, you can bring them closer together, right? They, they get bigger, they get brighter if they're at one inch as opposed to two inch as opposed to three inch, okay? You could also use bigger pixels. So that's the first type I've got here is pixel balls, okay? These guys are essentially very similar to these, same technology, about twice the brightness because they've got two LEDs inside of these balls, okay? But you get now, instead of being at like two inches with these little pixels, I've now spread out, this is a four inch spaced uh, pixel ball set, okay? Of a 360 pixel ball, I'll link below as to where to get them, okay? Um, and I think they're stinking cool. I think also, not only are they not just Christmassy, like these are Christmassy, right? These pixels, these bullet nodes, we like them. Um, but these, I could see hanging out in my backyard um, while I have a huge swing. But if I didn't have a huge swing from the tree, I would hang these in my backyard as like market lights, as pendants, and then maybe for Christmas, move them to the front and use them there. Pretty cool. There are also Christmas light kind of standard C9 type bulbs, okay? So these guys look a lot like the classic Christmas light with a shell, okay? Everything here is waterproof. Um, they need to be because of this hobby, right? Um, it's outdoors. Um, and the cool thing about these guys is you get that classic Christmas shape. And I like that. You know, I like the texture difference of having these big bulbs versus these little tiny guys. Now, 
with these big bulbs, I really wish there was a product where I could just mount these permanently, um, like I can with the Minley on the commercial grade ones. Um, but I still think they're darn cool. Okay. Um, and you can get these a lot of different places. Different people sell them. Um, these are Pixa bulbs, Pixa strings. They're sometimes called. Some of them are flat across the bottom, across the bottom like this. This is flat. Like I can see mounting a magnet on this or just a little adhesive thing and pfft, sticking it on my house. Um, there are ones where the wires come out of the back as well. Okay. So when we look at these different types of pixels, these different shapes you can get, um, as we get larger, we notice it's very easy to spread them further apart, right? These guys are, I believe, a six inches instead of maybe two inches on your bullet notes, okay? And, you know, these guys are at four inches. I could easily do them at six or even 12 inches, okay? And, and be really interesting because it's a larger pixel. And that's important because, as you might be thinking, um, any shell that you put on pixels, whether it be a traditional Christmas light, a ball, etc., is going to increase the cost of the pixel for two reasons. One is, you know, it's it makes the pixel larger. Um, it makes it larger for shipping. You know, there's more assembly required. Um, but number two is just, it's not as popular, right? They don't sell as many as the typical bullet nodes. And therefore, um, that means that they're going to be more expensive. It's just, you know, capitalism, right? Um, but... Because they're bigger, you can spread them further apart and still get the same impact. I think they're worth a look in your show. Okay? Now, let's think outside the box a little bit more. Okay? Um, this year, on the market, I saw in the hobbyist niche, these waterfall tubes come into play. They're not lightsabers, though they could be. They're, they're not that. Um, they're not that heavy duty. Okay? Um, and I wanted to check these out to share with you guys in this video as an option. Because they're stinking cool. Okay? So these are called waterfall tube. Um, different people have different names on them. But um, the importer in the U.S. that I found that has these is Wally's Lights. Okay. And as I've mentioned here before, you know, I've really come to like Wally's Lights. I think they, I think Wally, um, Ryan Walter, and, you know, they're, they're, um, I think that the way that they think is a lot like the way that I think, right? They want products to be affordable, but they want to bring a good level of quality too. And they really do that. They keep their quality high, but their price is really reasonable. And I think this waterfall tube is a great example. So what we have here, I'll just hold one up here, is we have a plastic tube, okay, waterproof, seal at the top, uh, generous size X-Connect connector so that you don't need extensions between different tubes. There's a metal hook that goes on the top. So I'm thinking, like, I'm going to hang these from my carport in an icicle pattern, and I can just sink a bunch of screws in in the frame of the carport, and then when it's time to hang them, it's just bloop, 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 boom. Hang them up, done. Real fast, okay? And then it's basically an LED tape product inside of these tubes where the pixels on either side give you basically 300 degree, 360 degrees of light. Um, and they also make it so that um, the two pixels on either side are the same pixel. Okay, just like these balls that are two-sided, okay, both sides are the same pixel, so you don't have to get really complex with your setup in x -Lights. Um, And these are cheap, too. That's what I really dig about these, is like, okay, you know, you're looking at 25-ish cents a pixel, a little, little less, a little more, depending on where you get it, for a bullet note, right? You're looking at, you know, I forget the exact cost, but up near a dollar or a buck or two for some of these larger sizes. Um, but these little guys... You get, uh, I think, 15 or 30 in the half meter or meter sticks. You see, I've got the different ones hanging here, hanging out here. They look pretty cool. Um, and between them, you know, these guys, the 15s are like 12 bucks, 13 bucks, and the 30s are like 16 bucks. So there, it's a really reasonable cost for pixel, a different form factor, totally waterproof, and really stinking cool looking. Okay, what other shapes do we have? Well, other than what we've shown here, there's one last pixel, and it's right on the wall here. It's this bright spot, okay? And I've got uh, some video as well of it and some trees in my house, okay? This is a floodlight. Let me grab one. These pixel floods have become popular as well, and they're a pixel just as well as anything else. They have X-Connect connectors. They plug into a pixel controller. 
The difference is, instead of taking 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.7 watts, they take up to 30 watts. Which means you've got to think about power and power injection, but they can look really stinking cool, as you see on the wall behind me, as you see in the pictures I shared. And we have one last type of pixel, thinking of pixel shapes, and it's these guys, these buggers right here. These ones are a little harder to find, but they are a big old nine LED pixel. You can see how bright that shines on me, okay? Uh, and you can find these various places as well. Uh, the kicker with these that I've found is they're basically an amusement park, you know, amusement ride type pixel. Um, if you can find them with X-Connect connectors, like I found Pixel Workshop has them, uh, in order to get the locking ring off the back, you actually have to heat up with a heat gun and bend the X-Connects, which is a little funky, but it's the way that it works. You can also find them from other vendors that will have them direct wire, um, generally straight from China, um, or with a JST type connector, uh, which is a non-waterproof connector. Um, but the cool thing about these is they're super stinking bright. So like for people that are doing those really big bulbs from Home Depot, they're retrofitting them. These can be a really great option for that. I mean, you can see how bright that is. It's, it's pretty bright, you know. Um, they are cool. They do use UCS1903 as their pixel type, which is a little bit different than WS2811, which is the most common pixel type. It's what all these are, really what everything around me is, okay. And the reason I say that is because most people recommend, um, and generally this is the case, that you want to keep your UCS1903 stuff on a separate port of your controller from your WS2811. From the controller, they take the same language, but they don't always work well if you're coming off a string of 2811s or going from the 1903s to a string of 2811s. When the chip inside them regenerates the signal, it just doesn't always quite work right between the two. Uh, still a cool option, especially if you're custom building stuff and you want something that's just big, you know, and bright, this could definitely be a very cool option for you as well. There. So what's the point about all this? Am I just rambling on about different shapes to sell you pixels? No. Um, as noted before, I'm not a pixel vendor and I don't really care what shape of pixel you choose. But as I've noticed in my display, you know, I like different shapes of pixels. I think it makes a display more interesting and can add that special touch to make things just a little bit more Christmassy. Just think about it. Maybe you've got a display with a lot of these regular pixels, but then you hit your roof line up with some C9, some plastic bulbs like this, right? Some big old plastic bulbs. It feels much more Christmassy. It catches the light. It makes a bigger something to look at and I think it just makes the display much more artistic and much more interesting, okay? And so ultimately, that's why I'm really pro and really for different shapes of pixels because it makes your show look more interesting and it allows you with the amount of pixels you have, whether that's few or many, to take a different and interesting element, a different shape, arrange it in a special way, arrange it in a way that's interesting, so that you're able to then uh, make the biggest impact in your show. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up here and uh, be sure to subscribe here and also check out my free guide, the three things you need to know before you buy any Christmas lights available over at learnchristmaslighting.com. And we will see you guys here next week as we do every week to teach you more about Christmas lighting and help you make a Christmas lighting display that is low stress and awesome. So. If you like that, check out Learn Christmas Light and check out everything we're doing, including the Academy, and we'll see you around the site. Thanks so much.